And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Wavelength. Yeah, look at that. Wavelength! Woo! This is a party game. Party game's a tough category. Every year, well, right about now, soon I'll be doing my top 10 party games of the year. And it's hard because there's so many party games that come out that are just cheap rip-offs, you know, a knockoff of some other game. Uh, it's weird and interesting, I think, to find a party game that stands out and is different. Well, I can tell you right now, Wavelength is different than other party games. That doesn't mean it's fun, though. Let's take a look at it and find out. Everybody's split into two teams. One team's going to go first. That team starts with zero points. The other team's going to start with one point. When it's your team, one person's going to be the psychic. They're going to draw a card here, and they're going to look at this card. Then they're going to spin this wheel at the top randomly. Woo! And then they're going to open the window and look and see where it's at. So the target is over here. And they're looking here at fad and classic. So. And they'll close this, and they're going to give their team a clue, trying to get their team to figure out to put it here. So I might put, for example, Pet Rock might be my clue. Now, your clue could be pretty much anything. There's rules. You can't make something up. You have to say something that that's real. Uh, you, you're not supposed to be super wordy with your clue. It all depends on the group, honestly. Then my team is going to discuss, and they might say, well, Pet Rock's definitely a fad. So that's a pretty strong fad. We don't see them anymore, so they might move it all the way over here. Then the other team, well, maybe they'll move it a little bit, almost all the way. The other team has to decide then if they think that needle's pushed too far or, you know, if the actual answer will be to the right or left. And they'll go, eh, we think it's even more of a fad than that. And then I reveal. Whew. So we look at this, and that is almost on the four. It is on the four. So my team would get four points. The other team gets nothing. Had my team picked this, we would have gotten no points, and the other team would have got one point because the actual answer was to the left of where that's at. All right, let's try one now. Well, you guys are there, so the clue is going to be basic or hipster. So let me spin the wheel. You just do this until it's randomized, and then I'm going to look at it. Basic or hipster? So I'm going to say uh, uh, a local coffee shop. So where would you put that? A local coffee shop. And then we look at the answer, and I put it over here a little bit on the hipster thing. So you can see other ones here, rough or smooth. Smells bad, smells good. Air side, Star Wars, Star Trek. Here we got flavorless, flavorful. Boring topic, fascinating topic. In fact, there's even a package of advanced cards here. Famous, infamous, weird, strange, never on time, always on time, stationary, mobile. I don't think they're that hard, the advanced cards. So you keep going. The first person to get the 10 points is going to win, or you can play a cooperative game where you're just all working together to try to get a certain number of points. However, the game does have a catch-up rule. If you score four points exactly, and you're behind still, you can go again. So if you are losing a lot, if it's nine to zero, you could get four, and then four, and then four, and win the game. But, well, that's very rarely gonna happen. That's how you play. This is the actual, this is a plastic insert that goes in a box, and then you put the little pieces like this. The cards are all fit in there. There's a ton of cards in this game. This game is you can use the cards over and over and over again. And they're different colors and stuff. They're neat. They're also all two-sided, which I like. They're decent quality cards, and they fit in there. And then the you can even put them down in here, or you put the pieces down there, whatever. And then the wheel itself just fits right there like that. Easy enough. And then all that fits inside the box. It's a very easy game to put away, get out. I like the components, and the cover is real, uh, I don't know, just a little trippy.
It is fun indeed. Wavelength is a tremendously great party game. I'm always a big fan of the team versus team thing, but what I like about this game is the discussions that are in it. So if you have hot and cold, for example, and I get, you know, this is the example used in the thing, I'll be like, coffee, well, that's very hot. Yeah, but not as hot as the sun. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay. So where would coffee sit? And that's kind of the thing. You, you, the, the, the game gives you this chance to be creative, but at the same time, if you're not creative, you can think of something that fits in that realm. And so you have this wide option of clues. See, one of my problems with a lot of party games is, take this card, play this card. I played a card, it was funnier than everyone else. That works sometimes, the apples, the apples, cards against humanity bit. But I like clues that let you think of a clever clue, and yet are still not so clever that People can't figure them out on their own. This is fun. It's very simple. It's easy to play. And it gets everyone into the spirit. They argue. And then after you reveal it, sometimes there's some shouting as, that's not nearly as flavorless as you said. And I, 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 I find that interesting. And also, you can't pick the clue ahead of time because you don't know where that wheel's going to stop. It might stop where it's on one side. It might stop where it's in the middle. And I, I, the whole thing to me is just highly entertaining. It is a really neat concept. Uh, of spinning that wheel and then trying to figure out where it is. And then there's there's discussion by both teams. One team discusses where does it you put it, the other, you know, and anyone can move it at any time. They can move that red thing on the team. And there might even be some that's not where it goes type aspect. And then the other team says, nah, you went too far to the left, you went too far to the right. Grab a point. It's not a long game. It's definitely a game I've seen where after it's played, it's like, let's play it again mark of a great party game. This is one, this is easily one of the best party games of the year. It's one of the best party games of the last several years. It's a neat idea. I like games that promote discussion, promote hilarity, and promote just pure out enjoyment of watching what other people do and trying to figure out someone else's mind. Psychic. Well, actually, gotta be on the same wavelength. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.